Welcome back, everybody, to Potty Mouths. We are so happy to have Potty you mouse? here. Potty Mouse, M-O-U-S-E. No, it's, it's <laughs> Mouths. It's tough to say. Mouths. It's awkward to say. But it is tough to worthwhile. say. I'm John Quaddy. Nick Kubik is with us. Nick, today, and I know this is a topic you and I have been kind of looking forward to for some time. In fact, I think we referred to it to one of our first or in one of our first podcasts, and that's dogs. So we'll, we'll, do, we'll do some talking about dogs, but I've got, I want to talk a little dogs versus cats too. So we've got that coming up. And, uh, but I think it's good to start because we're both dog people in that we currently own dogs and you have, you have multiple dogs, don't you? I have two. Yep. Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah. So yes, tell that us is about actually Bonnie and Clyde. their name. Well, Bonnie and Clyde, and I, I, so I really hope that my daughter doesn't start listening to this podcast anytime soon because I'm going to divulge a secret that uh, the dogs did not come from Santa Claus, which <laughs> that's what she believes. You told her they came from Santa? They were her gifts. She wanted puppies or that's a puppy, awesome. actually. And so when we were able to arrange these puppies, uh, <laughs> they uh, they came from Santa. That's but awesome. they're actually from the side of the road in East Tennessee. A cousin of my wife, uh, uh, another family member actually of hers, found them on the side of the road and they were looking for a permanent home. And uh, my wife's cousin knew that we were looking at dogs. We had been visiting animal shelters, which I'm a big proponent of animal shelters. Yep. Um, and this is coming from a long line or a long history of my family getting purebred dogs. So, you know, as I was able to start uh, getting my own dogs, I made a conscious choice that we were going to get it from, um, get all of our dogs from animal shelters from now on. So we were looking for animal rescues and we just weren't finding one that we really, really liked. And, and, uh, my wife's cousin called us and said, Hey, they, um, their cousins actually found these two dogs on the side of the road. They're gorgeous. Would you be interested? And they sent us pictures and I, it was over. I was like, yes, I don't even, I don't even care. Just yes, we're, we're going to, we're going to get them. And we were actually traveling to East Tennessee for Christmas. So we asked them if they wouldn't mind holding on to him. I think this was in October or November and said, can you hold on to him until December when we we're there for Christmas? And they said, absolutely. So yeah, we, we gave the puppies to my daughter for Christmas. And uh, I asked my wife, I let my wife name the dogs. Usually it's especially with two dogs. You know, I get to name one, she gets to name the other. Yeah. I said, go ahead and name them. She said, I want to name them Bonnie and Clyde. And they truly live up to their names. <laughs> they are rotten. But they're, they're, they're mutts and they're absolutely gorgeous mutts. I'll post pictures on our Facebook page. Yeah. Um, and I hope you would post of your dog as well. Of course. Um, but uh, we, yeah, the, the dogs are, are a handful. They're lovable. They're big cuddlers. They're great dogs. And how, how old are they? They're about three years old. Okay, now. and it is kind of a guess with with rescue dogs like that. But right, I, so so I have to start with this because I heard the same or a similar story about our dog, which is a rescue as well, and the side of the road. I, who does that? I don't get it. It pissed me off so much. I, I don't understand why anyone could, especially if when you look at these dogs, they're babies, they were puppies sure. and you just, you, you can't help. And, and maybe they, maybe they were cat people. I don't know. <laughs> you look at these dogs and you instantly fall in love with them. They are gorgeous dogs. Wow. And, and yeah, so that part just blows me away. Okay. So mine, we have a dog and we've had like you, it's funny how that mirrors uh, our experience seems to mirror itself, Nick, that we had a series of purebred dogs too for years. And uh, uh, we decided this time after going a year at, we had a uh, Weimar honor that uh, uh, unfortunately passed away in a beautiful dog surprise thing. And he was, he was a great dog, but we, we said, that's it. No more dogs. And we went almost to the day, went a year without getting another dog. And, um, uh, it, it was started. So ours is Indy. And I think it's short for, I don't know. We, we call him Indiana when we're pissed at him. Um, <laughs> so, so it's apparently short for that, but I think why not call, why not call him junior? <laughs> 
Junior. Yeah, we no, that's a really good idea. I, <laughs> that's an Indiana Jones reference for anyone who's listening and, and had no idea. I instantly knew it. I, I was hoping you would, I knew you you would. do the Sean Connery <laughs> accent, but you didn't really pull that off very well. Sorry. Yeah, I know. That's okay. So it started off even before we got this dog, also at a, from a shelter uh, like yours, that my wife started looking, I think I caught her looking online at pictures of these rescued dogs and we call it puppy porn. And, <laughs> and that's what she was doing. So I, I said, you're thinking about another dog, aren't you? Oh, I'm, I'm just looking. Yeah. Right. Like people used to do when I was in the car business, I'm just looking. Um, so yes. Anyway, so we got him and this dog is far and away the biggest spaz we've ever owned. And if, you're, <laughs> if you're not sure what a spaz is, I, it's probably got his picture in the dictionary entry. He's, uh, he was, he's much better than he used to be. Well, when we first got him, it was apparent, and I think he was probably six months old. It was apparent though, that he had been abused because anytime oh, that's I would raise my voice, he would cower and to say nothing of, you know, lifting my hand to grab something or whatever, he would just cower. And it's, uh, it, it's just, it is, it's sad. And it's the side of the road thing that, you know, that there was some abuse in this poor little guy's life before, you know, we got him. But, uh, ours looks like, uh, like a, kind of like a feral hound with the huge ears <laughs> and, and we'll, I'll also make sure I post a picture on our Facebook page, but you can kind of Please do. look to see what Indy looks like. But, uh, he, so it's kind of interesting too, cause he does have the huge ears and having had a Weimar on her that has the floppy ears, the ears don't do anything. They just kind of hang there and his, he yeah. had the little, he was he had a cropped tail, so it, it was like uh, we Lisa called it his hot dog tail, and he, he would you know just wag it back and forth, and it was great. He was he was a great dog, but this guy with the ears, the ears become like an extension of the tail because the tail's yeah. wagging and he's happy, but his ears will tell you everything. If he's happy, he folds yeah. them down like aerodynamic ears. If he if he's scared, he yeah. was, it's off to the side. If he's attentive. And they're huge. And so it's like straight up ears. And uh, uh, so it's interesting how it kind of reflects whatever condition he's in at the time. That's hilarious. Sounds like he has a big personality. He he has gained one. Yes. I think it was pretty quiet for a while. But <laughs> well, anyone living with you has got to have a big personality. <laughs> I, I don't think it's a competition, but actually it could be. It probably is. <laughs> now, do you think you look like your dog? Uh, no. No, my no. ears are, while my ears are huge, I, it's mainly because I'm getting old. I think, you know, it's like old person <laughs> ears. You see some people with, with old person ears and they're enormous. It's like yes. a, an Asian elephant, you know, that has, they're huge. And Hey, let's not get racist ears. now. Well, it, it could have been an African elephant. <laughs> it could have been, yes. But I think the Asians one, the Asian ones you will find have bigger ears. Oh, Okay. I don't, I don't know, I don't know my out. elephants well. I've never had an elephant. I haven't either. So I get talk to me about with other things. You, you had a Weimariner. Talk yeah. to me about some of the other dogs that you've had because and the reason I ask is my family history, we have had pretty much nothing but German shepherds. Oh, I and, love uh, German. In one of our previous episodes I kind of told you about my my the how my family structure was. So I'm talking about both sets of parents here. Both sets of parents constantly had German shepherds in the house. And I love German shepherds. I would have a German shepherd in a heartbeat. Yep. Me too. Absolutely true. Um, yeah. You know, we started off with a uh, golden retriever and uh, we got him when we lived in Texas. And I remember, still remember going to pick him up at the breeder where my wife <laughs> was holding him in her lap while we're driving back to our apartment. And, uh, and she's, she's just, you know, cuddling him and we love you. And I said, well, how can you say you love him? You just met him. He could be a dick, you know? So <laughs> he was, and he was great, but we were his, he was a great example of us being terrible owners. I think when dogs are bad, it's usually the owner's fault. Oh, a hundred percent of the yeah. time. Yeah. I, 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 I will argue that one to the day. And I, yeah. you know me, you've heard the, our episodes before. I am one of the most pacifist type of people when it comes to conflict. Yep. No, when it comes to dogs, 
I am passionate. Yeah. And I will, yes, I will argue that to the, it's, it's just like children. Yeah, I think so too. And, and, and you, and we were, we were those people and it wouldn't, we weren't purposely bad. We thought we were being nice and friendly and we we're going to be buds with you. But in reality, he, I mean, he would hide my car keys in the side of the waterbed. That shows you how old. <laughs> How long ago he just wanted was. to keep you around. He didn't want you to go to work. I used to, uh, one of the airlines I flew used to give these upgrade certificates so you could use them to upgrade to first class. He ate a boatload of them. So I was oh. back in coach, you know, probably middle seats on many flights because <laughs> we didn't train that, that well. Something similar happened to one of our dogs. I want, I'll save which dog it was for later, but one of our dogs ate a $10,000 check Ooh. once that we, my wife got as a, uh, um, inheritance and put it on the table. And one day it was gone and we found it in pieces everywhere. Oh, no. Luckily we were able to get it reissued, but it was, Oh my goodness. It was scary. Wow. We were young. So we didn't know we could get it reissued. That's awesome. That's awesome. So we, to answer your question, we had the golden, uh, where, where we learned to be stupid parents. And then we had the Weimar honor. We actually passed the golden on to my in-laws because we were moving, to a place that didn't allow dogs again, just young, stupid mistakes back then. But they also had a few years with the, with the golden and loved him. And then we got the Weimar honor after a couple of years after that. So tell me about yours. You're, you're all golden or all um, German shepherds or mostly. Yeah. So we had German shepherds. Those were the ones I would say we purchased. Let's, let's put it that way. So there were a few other dogs. My dad had a golden. I love, love the golden retrievers and that that golden retriever had puppies. So we had three golden retrievers wow. at one point um, with the German shepherd. The German shepherds never went away um, up until uh, our last German shepherd. My mom's last German shepherd passed away 1999 oh. or 2000, okay. um, something like that. She decided that she wanted another dog, but she didn't want another um, German shepherd. She wanted something that didn't shed. So she went with another German dog and probably I'm going to say, well, I love the dogs. I love, she got two of them eventually, but, and I loved both dogs so much as long as I didn't have to keep them, which I eventually did have to keep them. <laughs> um, but she got a standard poodle. Ah, uh, one of the smartest dogs in the world yep. to a fault. Yeah. These dogs were tears. One of these dogs is the one that ate the check. Um, so when my mom passed away, I inherited the standard poodles, my wife and I. But at the time, my wife – so before my wife and I got married before, and we were dating, she had a uh, uh, miniature schnauzer mm. and I had a pug, a black pug. Wow. Okay. So we had the, the pug and the schnauzer and then two standard poodles Wow. in an apartment. Or in a in a small, very small condo, and it was tight. So we had those those for uh, quite a long time, and um, then as we went through life, one the pug passed away first, then the schnauzer, then one of the poodles, and then one poodle. I call him the bionic poodle because when my mom was still alive, right after my stepfather had passed away, this dog, my mom had gone to um, see family in in the Netherlands. And I was in Nashville. The dog was in Minnesota. And we get a frantic call from the vet – or not the vet, the uh, the place where she was keeping the – kenneling the dogs. Mm -hmm. She said uh, – his name was Hogan. Hogan's really, really sick. I don't know what to do. I've got to take him to the vet. So take him to the vet. Turns out he had uh, – I don't know what it's really called. It's a stomach torsion. His stomach twisted, That's what which I guess is pretty common. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Really common. Yeah. And so they – they sent him to the University of Minnesota uh, to that veterinary school, and they said, "We can fix this. It's not. It's pretty common, yeah. but we need we we need a lot of money down." And we couldn't get a hold of my mom, so I said, "Just do it," and I paid for it because this was this dog. Even though my stepdad hated dogs, this dog was his dog, yeah. and he had just passed away, and I didn't want my mom to have to go through that. Right. So I said, "Save the dog. Do whatever we need to do." So at, at the end of it, this dog cost us thirty grand. Oh to get fixed. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. After everything, this 
Yep. So this was a bionic dog and it got to a point where this dog would not freaking die. <laughs> we were waiting. I mean, it was great dog, but he was, and he wasn't really suffering, but he was not having a good life. And th this was much further along the line. This is like five or six years after that surgery. So he, he had a really good life up until then, but he just, he, he was old and he just, he would not kick it. And finally, and, and I say this with as much love as I possibly can. Finally, he got cancer. Wow. And I had to, and I ended up having to put him down, but even with cancer, the, wow. the dog wouldn't die. Well, he it probably was, knew he how was much an incredible dog. He, in him. I, I did love that dog. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Uh, I'd like to think, you know, for, well, you, I don't know if people know this, but, but poodles are actually German dogs. And he was, uh, so, <laughs> so my family came from, from Holland. Mm -hmm. My mom's side of the family came from Holland and some of the family over there was Jewish, which is why they, they had left. And the reason my mom bought the poodle, she had actually received because my mom was born in Holland, so she was part of it. She actually received reparations from the Dutch government for really? Nazi um, wow. uh, Nazi atrocities. Yeah, so not much. It no. was like you know a couple thousand dollars, but wow. that's what she used to buy the dog. So, so I, I th he, yes, I think he was trying to make amends for a lot of things, including how much money we spend on him, but yeah, also yeah. You know, atrocities wow. to my family wow. going way, way back. I'm completely. I'm, I'm completely hoping people are taking that kind of a, a jokey <laughs> level, but well, you know, <laughs> it's true, but it's still, it's funny. Well, I'm making it, I'm yeah, trying to make it funny. Accomplished. I'm dying over here. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, well, You're a beauty. Okay. Yes. All right. So I, somehow I knew we'd get to so, yeah. German atrocities since we started talking about dogs. Absolutely. So let's um, go into German atrocities. Uh, let's dive into this topic. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, that's, that's another podcast. <laughs> uh, but what I did want to go back to is something you said, shedding. Talk to me yes. about your dogs now, uh, so, Bonnie and Clyde and shedding. Bonnie and Clyde are litter mates, which if you would, if you looked at them, you probably wouldn't think. Their heads are shaped very similarly, but Clyde is white and brown and is a little bit bigger. And Bonnie is black and white and, quite, and a bit smaller. Um, it's very strange. Clyde sheds a ton. Bonnie barely <laughs> sheds at all. Really? See, I, that's amazing to me. I, 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 and they're litter mates. They're litter How mates. can that be? I have no idea. I have no idea. Wow. But one thing off topic, but on topic, one thing I will never, ever, 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 ever do again is get a pair of litter mates. Oh. They are not impossible to train, but they're very difficult to train. Interesting. When they're, if, if I were to take Clyde or take Bonnie by themselves somewhere, perfectly well behaved they'll listen to me they'll walk on a leash they'll be fine put them together they won't do it they're up and they're all over each other they're all over everybody else and we can't get them to stop we, we even tried funny. separating them when we put them in their kennels in other opposite rooms and all you do all they do is cry the entire time they just want to be with wow. each other the whole time sure right so right. very wow. difficult and i i would say i'm a decent dog trainer i've had plenty of them and i've trained every single yeah. one of them and i can't get through to these dogs it's taken three years to get him to, and Clyde listens much better than Bonnie. Bonnie is more like a cat. Clyde is more, mm. is, is a true dog, a lumber, we, we, you know, a big lug, if you will. He's uh, yep. just kind of lumbers everywhere and knocks his tail on everything and hits everything. It's just fun loving and wants to play. Bonnie just so, wants to cuddle. Is there some, when you look at them, is there some, and I said that, that Indy kind of looks like a feral hound. What what do you think are the backgrounds of your dogs, if you had to guess? If I had to guess, I would say they are part, uh, maybe not bloodhound, but some sort of hound, because they have the hmm. ears and, and kind of a little bit of the body shape. Yep. Um, their head... And it's only their head and the brindle color and Clyde um, has a little bit of a um, um, what are the dogs that everyone dislikes or scared of? Oh, the pit bull pit bull. So there's a little bit of pit in them huh. and, but their snout Clyde's snout looks a little pitish. It's a little bit longer. Bonnie's snout doesn't look anything like a pit. Uh, and hmm. then there's, there's gotta be some retriever in there somewhere of not a, not like a golden retriever, but a, um, not a, I'm sorry, not a retriever, a terrier. So there's got to be some sort of terrier in there as well. How so? How big are they weight wise? Um, Clyde is about fifty five pounds. Bonnie is oh. about forty five fifty. They're they're pretty good sized dogs. They're then. medium sized. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I carry them around like babies, but they're uh, 
They're not they're not German shepherds, but they're definitely not pugs. Yeah. Even though my pug right. weighed about fifty pounds at one point too. Solid though. Yeah, solid. solid. Pugs are solid. Yep. Yeah. And Indy is probably our dog is probably uh, about forty pounds. In fact, about I think he's pounds. pretty consistently that. But and our, what what's his coloring? He is oh gosh I don't have a cool color name like you do Brindle um, <laughs> he, he's like uh, it's like kind of a reddish brown I guess would be the best okay. way to describe it but um, he so we had the Weimar honor a, a year before we got Indy and the Weimar honor if he did shed which was very little it was the little tiny gray hairs mm-hmm. so. Who cares? You know, you don't even notice it when you vacuum. It's fine. And Indy, on the other hand, sheds like a banshee. Really? It is unbelievable. So he'll scratch and it just floats in the air and (laughs) it, it, of course, ends up on the hardwood floors. And oh, my Gosh, but it's is, is Indy soft or is his, is his hair kind of? He's coarse. very much German Shepherdish, uh, okay. and so, so, so kind he, of not soft but not coarse. Right, right, okay. exactly, definitely not soft. But he has my brother and sister in law have a German Shepherd. We okay. love her, but they have known each other these two um, for for years, and they get along great. Except the German Shepherd is you know, twice his size now. <laughs> so it's kind of funny to watch them interact after having been around so long. But they both shed like crazy. So oh, man. that's just how it how it is with those types of dogs, apparently. But uh yeah. So the the, the, the size thing is interesting. I, I, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, no, no, you, you have the rest of that story. Go ahead. No, no, I, the, the shedding sucks. That's the end of the story. Shedding sucks. Yeah. So I, I told you I had a pug and, and she was black. Her name was Buka. Cute little dog. And when I first got her, she didn't, thank you. It was not, I didn't choose it. Um, There's a long story behind that. I don't, I don't think we'll, I'll get into, but anyway, I had Buka and she didn't get to be really heavy until a lot later. It was like five or six years before she started getting really heavy. So she was actually fairly small, fairly lean most of her life. Mm -hmm. Um, And my dad had, and this, again, this is one of the things he didn't look for the dog. The dog just one day showed up and it became his dog. Hmm. Um, Big, huge, black, uh, great Dane Mastiff mix. Oh my gosh. His name was Bertram T dog. (laughs) Bertram was so big. And I I wish I could find the picture. I have a picture somewhere. uh, I have two pictures, actually one. I have a picture of my dad's horse pasture and you see this big black horse out there. And then you go, that's a small horse. I don't think my dad has another pony. Oh wait, no, that's Bert. He looked like a fricking horse, but what did, what did, what did he weigh? If you had to guess. Uh, he, well, I know he was a little over 200 pounds. Whoa. It was a massive dog. Yeah. Massive dog. Wow. Um, I have a picture of Buka in my arms next to Bert's head and Buka, <laughs> her whole body is the size of Bert's head. <laughs> it was absolutely a lovable dog. I mean, this Hard dog to- wanted to talk about cuddle. This dog was a cuddle bug. He wanted yeah. to cuddle with you all the time. Hard to believe uh, he, they're of the of the same species, isn't it? Right? Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, this yeah. was a massive dog. Yeah. I loved him to death. I would have I would have had that dog in a heartbeat if if he were uh if he were up for grabs, but mm. would have probably torn up the house. My dad couldn't have him in the house. He had to he slept in the basement. Yeah. Um because he would just he would literally tear the house apart. Not not trying to. He wasn't like a chewer. Like my dogs are chewers. He wasn't a chewer. He just so big and lumber yeah. lumbersome. He just knocked things over. Oh, we had um, we had neighbors once that had a mastiff and and a female, and she was probably a buck eighty or so. So oh, a, a big girl, but just the sweetest thing. The problem is one of the problems that they typically only live about eight years. Yeah. And and so that's the, you know, the, that's the trouble with owning dogs is as you've alluded to, it's the whole dying part, you know, yeah, it's I, hard. It's like a family member for people that are dog folks, you know, cause uh, I mean, oh, anytime Indy is not, you know, Indy's out getting groomed or at least is taking him to the vet or something like that. Uh, and you walk in the house and it's like, Something's wrong because it's yeah. empty in here, and you know uh, it's it's just amazing to me the difference uh, to dog people when it's, oh yeah it's just so sad uh, when the dogs go. I was 
I was joking earlier about uh, you know making what just waiting for for Hogan to to die and and you know why is this dog not dying? But it was it ripped us apart when he did finally. Yeah. You know it was I was there when he when he was put down and and I cried. Yeah, I'll admit that. Yeah, I'm not ashamed. Uh-huh. Um, but it was it was very sad. And we said, oh, we're not going to do dogs for a while. We just can't. Right. And it wasn't six months later we had another pair of dogs. So well, and I'm not convinced that that uh, sometimes the best treatment for you know, that sadness is getting another dog. <laughs> right. And, oh, and right, so we've right. never done that. We've always suffered the, I told you, a year after the Weimaraner passed away. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, we suffered for a lot of that. And I'm not sure that yeah. we shouldn't have just gotten another dog right away. Yeah. Well, and it, even when you have dogs, it's crazy too. We think about this all the time. We like to travel. We like to go places. We like yep. to go see my in-laws, but we can't take the dogs with us. So we'd have to board them. And we're always, oh, this is, let's just not go this time because we have to board the dogs and it's expensive or, you know, let's, we don't, we want to go, but yo, oh, the dogs, you know, it's, yep. we, we just can't. And we're like, oh, maybe we shouldn't have done dogs. Oh, they're in the way. But then when we come home, or when I come home from from traveling for work, and they're up and they're smiling, even when I'm gone for an hour, I miss them. Yeah, and I can't wait to get back to my dogs. It's the same with my daughter, but you know, <laughs> like you said, they're an extension of your family. <laughs> you know, I can't wait to get home to see my daughter yep. either. Yep. But it's also the dogs, and just she, as much. Your daughter, I, I know this for a fact, does not shed nearly as much as dogs. Not near. Well, yeah. I, she does shed pretty bad. I had to clean out her brush yesterday. That was oh, amazing. No. I was. I'm like, how does an eight year old shed this much? And I, then I think of myself and go, Oh yeah, I know. It's family. It's it's in the genes. That's funny. I shed all the top of my head. <laughs> yeah, but the sides are hanging on. Yeah, in, in a picture you can't tell because they're so gray. It's so gray. <laughs> Mine too. Now. <laughs> So pick something and I'll go first so you'll have a chance to think about it, but something that you're that Bonnie and Clyde do that's unusual or funny or, or whatever mine. And I, I made note of this cause I want to make sure I brought it up for Indy is every month there's a tornado siren test. Right. And, and it's at the same, you know, Wednesday at 11 and he howls along with it. And it's it's amazing. <laughs> I've videotaped it before that it's just it, it's hilarious because he just throws his head back and does the whole <laughs> animal that's it's instinct howling. And so and you know so we're trying to trying to praise him for that because obviously you're just amplifying the so we'll know if there's a tornado and thanks right exactly it's. <laughs> It's awesome, but he does That's this great. Whole, whole dramatic oh, when he throws his head. <laughs> and if I start doing that, by the way, which is interesting, anything that's a who at that sort of a of a note, he will start uh-huh. howling. <laughs> so oh, I was going to say that you, your that. wife your wife gives you a treat when you do that. I she does, and actually, I've just gotten her to stop howling too. So that's good. <laughs> very helpful. Very helpful. Oh boy! So what? What if Bonnie funny. and Clyde have this? That's interesting <laughs> have, or weird. Or they have a couple of things. Um, they talk to so that Bonnie will talk to me. Will talk to my wife. And when I say talk, she's like, "That's fun." Just when she wants to get attention, you know. She, like I said, she's a cuddle bug. She just all she wants to do is cuddle. And if you won't cuddle with her, she'll just sit there and climb up closer, as close as she can get, and go. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and I've never, Why? I have to say this, I've never actually heard Bonnie, but that was a magnificent impression. Oh, it's, it's identical. I, I'm <laughs> really good at, imp- and uh, yeah. <laughs> imitating dogs. Yes. Imitating. Thank you. I couldn't think of the word. <laughs> I, I'm really good at imitating dogs. So Clyde though, Clyde will talk, but he won't do it when I'm around. Hmm. And I, we don't know if it's he doesn't want to talk to me or if he's talking because I'm not around. But if I'm gone at work or uh, traveling, he will sit on the edge of the couch and look at my wife and start whining and talking. And, and I can't do his – I can't impre- and do an impression of him well, because it's, never it's heard a it. little bit <laughs> – Well, no. It's, my wife has recorded it before. Oh, okay. But it's, it's insane. It's not like Bonnie's hmm, – hmm, hmm. it's more like a – <laughs> like he's talking like he sounds like he sounds like scooby-doo oh my god um, that's funny but he will not do it when i'm around 
You it's crazy. You know what that reminds me of is that the German Shepherd on YouTube with the maple bacon. Oh, yeah. The, oh, oh, we do that around the house all the time. All three of us, That's, my wife, my daughter, and I. Oh, yeah. bacon kind. The, yeah. yeah, the maple yeah. flavor. Yeah, the maple <laughs> we kind. Do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that's that is truly my favorite YouTube video of mine all time. Too. Mine too. It's and I looked at it. It's interesting. I looked just this morning I, because thinking about it, I wanted to I wanted to watch it. But it's it's like it has over two hundred million views. It's just oh, amazing. I think it's better than Charlie. You bit me. Yeah, that's <laughs> funny too. Yeah. <laughs> or Linda, Linda, listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> I love those. That's just I still, awesome. I still get Facebook posts tagged in Facebook posts from my uh, one of the my old coworkers from the dealership that I worked in because he used to sit across the the showroom and go, Alan, 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 <laughs> Alan. <laughs> That's funny too. <laughs> and people listening now probably have no idea what we're talking about. Oh okay. no! They everybody knows the groundhog or whatever it is. That's <laughs> that's awesome. That is also one of my favorite. Mine too. Mine too. Mine's, oh my gosh! Okay, well, so let's the, the, well go. quickly. The, the last thing Bonnie does. Bonnie actually oh, likes yeah. to get picked up like a child. So she will <laughs> she will get up on her hind legs and put her like she's jumping up. Oh my she gosh! Will, she will not get down until you pick her up, and then she will straddle you like a little child. You just sit there. <laughs> You're raising babies. We're raising babies. Yep. Clyde hates it. Clyde <laughs> will not do it. But Bonnie just, she loves to be held. How funny. And not, not like held, like she'll lay down in your arms because she's too big for that anyways. But even if she were small enough, <laughs> no, she likes to be held like a child. Like it's almost <laughs> like she's mimicking me carrying my daughter. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Uh, I, yeah. So, and, and that just shows the personalities. It's just amazing. And, and oh, yeah. dogs. They're both, so, they're both incredibly sweet. So let's talk dogs versus cats. Do you have cats or have you had cats? I have had cats in the past. Um, They make great target practice. Um, (laughs) I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I would never hurt a cat. I do like cats. All a joke. Yes. But I would prefer dogs and I would prefer to keep a cat out of my house. So you have no cats now currently? Have no cats. Okay. And so I would always take a snake over a cat and I hate snakes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Only because snakes, big ones, eat cats, so it's fine. Yeah. Mom, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> like you, I had cats. We had cats growing up, too, and usually just strays, you know, that we kept two yeah. or three of them that I remember, um, which which I, which I, was kind of interesting because I'm not a big cat person. And the other thing that <laughs> I don't think I've mentioned, I'm allergic to dogs and cats. Oh, Yeah. You're allergic yeah. to dogs too? <laughs> yes, dogs and cats. And so, which is, look, I'm used to it now, so it's no big deal. But when when I pet the dog or any of our dogs and I'll, you know, stand back, give them loving and so on, I have to immediately wash my hands. Otherwise, my eyes will swell up and oh, tear wow. up or whatever. Yeah, it's kind of stupid. but That's well, crazy. And you, you've had this allergy all your life? Um, I think I probably – probably any time after 20 years old, I think I, I really noticed it. Okay. So Did I you have, did did you have dogs when you were a kid or cats? Oh, yes. Yes, okay. both. And it never yep. bothered you both. until about 20 years old? Not that I recall. No, I, I think it was probably around that time where it's – and, you know, it's it, – it, I wear contacts often and anytime you're – poking in your eye after you do it. So whether it's slicing onions or oh, yeah. <laughs> jalapeno peppers, I don't That's recommend that. Yeah. Touch your eyes after you do that. Pretty stupid, but I, I kind of have the same allergy uh, wow. issue with, with dogs. But it's, it sounds like it's manageable. You don't have to take medication for it. I feel no, really exactly. bad for those people who absolutely love cats or yep. dogs yep. that just can't have them in the house. Yep. Absolutely. Or they have, they're medicated. And I mean, I've, I've taken allergy medicine before. It's not fun. No, no. It's usually it messes you up oftentimes. Okay. So you alluded to this earlier where dogs, uh, so dogs versus cats, dogs are 
always happy to see you no matter what. And, it, and yep. it's funny, as you said, it's when you, I mean, you could be, I just went out to get milk <laughs> and the dog is like, Oh, you've been gone for a month, you know? And, and so delighted to see you. I heard this before and I'm assuming it's a joke. If you lock, if you lock your dog and your wife in the trunk of your car, when you let them out, only one of them's going to be happy to see you. <laughs> there's a lot of truth to that there's a lot of truth to that well, coming from but someone could, who's never uh, done it you know well it, it was me either yeah. however i i think what you were talking about earlier with cat the difference between cats and dogs if you did that to a cat or a dog the same is true the same is absolutely true the cat wouldn't care one bit the dog would be so happy to see you well the cat wouldn't come out no the cat would stay that's like trunk. ooh. It's dark yeah. and nice in here. Exactly. I'm going to stay. Exactly right. <laughs> so a little research. So for anybody who says that the Potty Mouth podcasts do not teach you anything, get this. Dogs average 530 million neurons in their brains, most in the cerebral cortex, so linked to intelligence. Cats, okay. only 250 million neurons. Really? Yeah, that's really interesting because most See? people think cats are smarter. That's right. They're not. No, apparently not. So not scientifically. Where, where do humans fall? Two hundred. Um, I I think I have like fifty. I, well, I was going. I wasn't talking about us. I was talking about humans. <laughs> oh, oh, other humans. Yes, right. Not potty mouth humans. <laughs> no, thank goodness we have a different standard. <laughs> Do we? Do yeah. we really? <laughs> yeah, I think we do, yeah. So, I have no and standards. You, said, you think <laughs> cats are smarter, and I always think about that. Because, you know, some they act more aloof or smarter, but they're not necessarily – heard a good quote about that. Owning a cat isn't really that different from not owning a cat. <laughs> <laughs> and I like if you've that. owned a cat, you know it's really about the same. <laughs> That's, that is so true. That's incredible. <laughs> I love that saying. I'm going to use that from now on. Please do oh, and take full credit. I will. I've, I, yeah. I've, I've done that plenty of times. You know, 95% of all statistics are made up on the spot. I use it every day. It's <laughs> <That's> good. <laughs> yes, that's also one of my favorites. So what, what – the cats that you had when you were younger, what – I mean, were they strays or were they pet shop? Cats or what? Well, that's a tough question to answer. So again, splitting my families, my mom and I had two yep. cats. We had a black cat, which I loved. His name was Sam. And uh, we had Sam for a, a really long time, probably 10 or 12 years. We had had to end up giving Sam to a farm because we had moved a couple of times. And I guess with cats, and I, I don't know for sure, but I guess with cats, when you move too much, they start peeing on things. And he was peeing on everything. Oh, so he had to go out okay. to a farm where he could pee on everything. Um, and then <laughs> yes. we had Katie. And Katie Katie ended up passing away at some point. But Katie was a manx. So she was a little bit bigger. And she had a crop tail. Um, kind of looked almost like a bobcat. And um, wow. so those were my two cats that were indoor cats, were home cats. After that, we never – my mom and I never had a cat in the house. My mom, my stepdad, or I never had a cat in the house. Hmm. Um, my dad, on the other hand, never had cats in the house, but owned a farm. So he had probably 30 cats right. around the farm. Right. Um, and we, uh, I, I always played with the cats. They were, those were my animals. So when my dad was trying to get me to muck the stalls in the barn, I was off playing with the cats in the <laughs> hayloft. So I loved cats when I did, when they distracted me from having to muck the stalls. <laughs> How about you? That's awesome. I, well, I'm I'm with you on the farm cats thing. Um, we have some friends not far from uh, uh, our house where we grew up that had, uh, you know, a, a dairy farm. And they probably like your dad had probably 20, typically have 20 cats at that farm. And, and so then they're always sweet and they're, you know, very nice. Of course, they're filthy and uh, getting pooped on by cows and all that. But uh, um, yeah, we had a couple strays, as I mentioned, at home when I was growing up. And one was gone for, 
I don't I want to say a week and we thought, oh man, Tuffy is is gone. We're never gonna see him again. And he came back and it looked like he was in some sort of a uh, some sort of a melee where he had his eye was beaten up and he was bloody oh, no. and but he came back and we just assumed he got in some fight with a pack of wolves and kicked their butts and and then came home about a week later. He was a, <laughs> he was a pretty tough cat. So anyway, but we had him and then we had two others that uh, that were I don't know just uh, strays that uh, were nice enough uh, to have around the house. But they you know like a lot of cats, they weren't really social creatures necessarily. Right. Unless they wanted something. Yes. Yeah, uh, so like the, the, the old can opener opening up a can of food that would uh, always bring them into the kitchen. Right. I had a stepbrother uh, who had a cat and I would go stay with him. Um, and that cat would come in in the morning and sit on my head. That's how <laughs> he got me up. That's pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> but and so going back, I, I know when my mom and dad were together and they lived at the same farm that my dad had, um, my mom actually had a cat and they, they named it. It was either that damn cat or damn cat. <laughs> that was the cat's name. So whenever they could, you know, where's that damn cat? Where's damn cat? <laughs> hey, damn cat. You know, so, so how about, how about names for, I, I, so I had a buddy in, in Florida who had a, oh gosh, it's a, I, it's another German dog and I can't, I can't think what it was, but a big and very powerful. And, and, uh, I'm going to, I should know the name of the dog, but anyway, but the name was he, I said, what's your dog's name? And he goes, D.O.G. And I'm going, Oh, D.O.G. That's really a cool name. Is that like a family? He says, no, D O G. <laughs> D-O-G. <laughs> oh, so where where was this friend because i actually know i had a student who had a dog when she was growing up this was way back when i taught several yeah. years ago uh -huh. and and the dog's name was d-o-g <laughs> and she said the dog's name is d-o-g <laughs> D <-O -G. laughs> and yeah. i'm sure it's common i just hadn't it heard could it be. So i love it made me laugh <laughs> I love that. That's great. Yes. Uh, well, in my family, we actually kind of had a tradition. It was later, not all of our dogs, because some of our dogs, there's there are stories behind them, and they were named when they came to us, and we did we didn't like changing names. Uh, but right. when when we got dogs, when we got dogs from the breeders or or picked them up, we actually named them after their AKC because they're all so they're all they all have papers right. on them. Right. Um, the Kennel Club, uh, American Kennel Club. Yep. And so we, we named them, their names are much longer than what we called them. So Hogan was, his full name was Ben Hogan. Wow. Ben Hogan Milray. Yep. Um, and then Buka was Annika Buka Sorenstam Kubik. <laughs> wow. Um, I, we, uh, I had I another pug, which that was the long story I don't <laughs> want to get into, but he was uh, Byron Nelson. So we called him Nelson. Nelly Belly. So are you see, are you seeing a trend here? Ben Hogan, Annika Sorenstam. Yep, Sorenstam. Wow. Um, Myron Nelson. So, so all of our okay, dogs were named is, after golfers. This is where you and I have a lot more in common than I thought we did because we named our AKC dogs the same way, except we except we used not golfers. We used cartoon characters. So our golden retriever oh, really? was uh, Wild E Retriever Super G. Oh. <laughs> so it was Wiley Coyote, and if you remember one of the Warner Brothers cartoons, that was him creating. He was oh, gosh, it was like in a train caboose, and he's making explosives. Yeah, <laughs> and he goes Wiley e. Coyote says Wild E Coyote Super Genius. I like the way that rolls out. Wild E. Coyote. And then he gets hit by a train or something like that. And and that was so he was Wild E. Retriever Super G, standing for genius. And we would have continued with genius, oh, but boy. we ran out of room on the AKC. <laughs> yeah. And, and Sammy was the was the Weimar honor, and he was Yosemite Sam Super G. I think we kept the Super G. Um, Super G. Yeah. So nice. that was, we thought we were brilliant. So.
so yeah, we have Yosemite Sam and Wile E. Coyote and Indy. I have no idea where that came from. I think my son named him, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, yeah, so that nice. was the, those were the AKCs, which <laughs> I thought nice. that was brilliant. I, yeah, cartoon. Character. I think they are brilliant. I, I think those are the greatest names in the world. <laughs> um, if if I hadn't let my my wife name both dogs, one of them probably would have had a golfer's name again. They probably would have done the same thing, even though they're not uh, kennel club registered. That's really funny though. The whole going, golfer but... Byron Nell. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So oh, I just found but, I found because I was searching to um, uh, the uh, breed. I was the, the DOG breed was a Rottweiler, the Roddy. Okay. Roddy. I like Rottweilers. I think they're great dogs, but you know, kind of have a reputation as well, which mostly comes down to the owners. Yeah. The only, there's only one dog and I can't say I I dislike her anymore. My dad has one now. It's a a miniature pincher. Oh, a min pin. Yes. They're so cute. And they're so cute, but they're so bratty. This dog. Yeah. This dog will, would not leave my dad's side. Wow. Um, In fact, I, and I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure about this, but in fact, I think this was a former stepmother's, dog that actually liked my dad better <laughs> and when they got divorced the dog stayed with my dad <laughs> because it would not go with my former Whoa. stepmother um yeah this is and this dog hate this dog would not come near me will not come near my daughter this dog would not come near anybody and then finally when i was out there for his his birthday last mm-hmm. year with my daughter this dog was all about me. I mean, like I had her laying in my lap, um, belly up, and I was rubbing her belly. But she would go to my dad. She would go to me. She would not go to my new stepmom, and she would not go to my daughter. Huh. Interesting. Yep. Yep. And she's a nipper, too. She likes to nip. <laughs> oh, good. That's what you want. Yep. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, and and speaking of Dobermans, the uh, my wife's aunt – had uh had two Dobermans and they were the full size, not the miniature ones, indoor uh-huh. dogs, and they were massive. They were uh, probably 150 pounds each, maybe maybe 130, but unbelievable. And and but the nicest dogs ever. You wanted them on your side in a fight, though. <laughs> <laughs> they just look intimidating, you know, like Rottweilers yeah. too, sort of, and German Shepherd. Yeah. Oh, that's I, yeah. I was going to say that's one of the reasons I think we love German Shepherds so much. We the last German Shepherd we had, he was actually technically a rescue, and it's a weird. So we had another German Shepherd, um, and uh, I can't remember her name. Emma, oh, Emma was her name, and we were having some trouble training Emma. Um, we were it was okay, but she was just a, a there was something wrong with her mentally. I think, uh. um, and and a lot of even the vets were saying that I think there's just something a little bit off about her. Um, she wasn't a bad dog by any means. She was just a little bit slower. She was a little bit more difficult to train than most mm. German shepherds. We uh, we boarded her at the breeder's house. Um, she would she also did boarding. So we were we would go on vacation and we would send Emma to this this the breeder border. And uh, the we came back once to pick her up, and there was this really skinny, really malnourished, um, very skittish German Shepherd that she had, um, and and. I guess he was there when we left too, but he was there when we came back and we're like, what's the story with that dog? And and she said, Oh, that's Tycho. And Tycho has now been here for about three months. The owner came to drop, drop him off um, to go on vacation and just never came back to pick Mm -hmm. him up. And he said, well, he's really malnourished. He's like, I know I'm, he's looks better better than he did when he came in. Um, I think the owner had been feeding him cat food. And kept him locked in his apartment all the time. It just never took care of him. And it's a good thing he probably mm-hmm. left him. So we we adopted Tycho. We said, well, we're, we'll take him because I think this will help Emma. Tycho was probably the best German Shepherd, best dog oh, cool. I have ever had. Even to this day. I love my dogs. I've loved every single one of them. He is probably still wow. the best dog I have ever had. Um, just he would sleep with me. He, um, One of my best friends, he would... He was my stepdad's best friend. He would just always follow us. He never ran off. And he was a, he was a lover, not a fighter. He, it didn't matter if someone it, – it was almost like if someone broke into the house, yep. he would probably lick him to death. He was – he never barked, really? never heard this dog bark. I literally never, ever heard hmm. this dog bark. Um, never growled, never did anything. Just a gentle, hmm. gentle giant, right? 
Well, one day I was walking down the street. I was probably 12 years old and I was with one of my friends and Tycho was with us and he was right next to my leg, left leg. I remember it. It just, he hugged my leg the whole time and we we're just walking and nothing going on. And all of a sudden this dog comes from out of nowhere, just, just running as fast as he can at us growling. Tycho hair goes up on the back of his neck growls, runs at this dog, Ooh. takes his paw and just whacks him across the side of the head. And you hear this dog wow. go, arr, 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 and then take off running. And Tycho came right back to my side wow. and started walking again. And I, my friend and I were just sitting there going, yeah, really? what just happened? That was incredible. I mean, so super protective, super smart. And um, one of the reasons I love German Shepherd so much because every German Shepherd I've had at some level has been wow. very similar to that. Yeah, you know, the uh, so the barking is what I like uh, as much as I dislike it when the FedEx guy comes and, mm-hmm. and all of that. But but right. I, I, <laughs> I really do like it. And, and especially and Indy's got a pretty good bark, um, but German Shepherds have that throaty. Oh, my gosh. And, and if you're mm-hmm. a criminal yep. or a potential criminal and you hear that, you're going to pick an easier target, I think. Oh, yeah. You're running. <laughs> so, yep. I, I mean, it's, oh, that's yeah. just awesome stuff oh, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. And you know what? And so speaking of that, I, I think about – about, um, you know, and this taking a serious turn, but school shootings and so on. I think dogs are the answer. German shepherds in particular, or big dogs like that, that would, would cause a potential shooter or someone who's, you know, even just looking to do bad things. Uh, that would cause them to think twice. With with I've never thought of that. And I think that's that's absolutely a brilliant idea. Yeah, I, I, I really do. I really do too. I think it's a. I, you just think about it, and I give to, you know, a lot of, and I know our police department right now, and in, in my our town is looking for donations for a, a canine unit, and man, I'm all over it. I'm I've given given oh, to that and would continue to. And these are not dogs. Canine unit dogs are not dogs that you can go pet and, you know, hey, hi, buddy. Right. I mean, you can, but it's the handler that, that has to do all of that right. stuff. Absolutely. I, I just think I just think they do some amazing things and they just don't they're not utilized. Right. Well, and, so, you, know. you make a great point too. It's not just the police dog. I mean, look at all of the different things that, that dogs can do. Uh, you've got therapy yep. dogs, you've got service dogs. We already allow them in schools. Why not have yep. a police dog in the school? Someone, something that exactly. can um, help protect. And I think that's, I, I honestly think that's a genius idea. Well, thank you. You're, you're welcome. You're so kind. You're welcome. <laughs> I do also think that's a great note to uh, to end on. Um, but here's here's something that I think we should ask our viewers or listener mm. viewers. <laughs> yeah. I think we should ask our listeners to maybe do for us. I would love to see everyone's dogs. That's a really so. Good if idea. you have a dog and you're proud of it and you want to show us your 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 dogs, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to post our dogs up to our Instagram and our Facebook. But go up to the Potty Miles Instagram or the Potty Miles Facebook and you know post your dog and, and tag us in it. Um, let us see what uh, what some of your favorite pets are. And you know what? I'm not even going to limit that to dogs. If you've got a cat that you absolutely love. We may have been making fun of cat lovers and and people that have cats, but we are not against cats. We do we do have a special place in our hearts for cats. So if you want to show us your cats and or your dogs, please, please, please or, share or with squirrels. us on our Facebook or squirrels or, squirrels. or, or... the only the only place I draw the line are goldfish. Please don't share your goldfish with us. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. If you want to show your goldfish, go ahead They're and show delicious. your goldfish. They're delicious. They really are. <laughs> That's terrible. I'm sorry. I did not. That, that was pretty yeah, bad. But you're welcome. Oh well. <laughs> we are going to. We were going to call this pod. This this uh, podcast shameless, but that was already taken. <laughs> yeah, we're we're heavy into the shameful ones. I think. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, maybe we could change the name to shameful. No, never mind. <laughs> Anyway, um, go ahead and uh, visit us on Facebook at Potty Mouths and same with Instagram and Twitter. And if you have some time, head over to Patreon and uh, show us your support. Help us build this podcast into something greater. Help us help us save more dogs and cats. Well, why don't you just tell it the way it is? Help us get wealthy so we can stop help working and just do podcasts all the time. And help dogs and cats. And oh, sure. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's it. <laughs> John, it was great talking to you again, my friend. Um, Always my pleasure, Nick. One thing that we are going to try to do, our listeners, uh, and I'm using the S, notice that, our listeners, awesome. we have been recording way ahead of time, but we want to be able to recognize some of our listeners when they leave comments or, or be able to respond to some of the questions that our listeners have. So we are going to start recording a little bit more a little bit fewer, I guess, uh, a little a fewer episodes uh, every time we talk and try to keep our content a little bit more relevant. So expect to uh, hopefully get some answers to some of those questions and some of those um, things that you've been posting on our social media uh, a little bit more often, a little sooner. So um, something that we'd like to try. John, anything else you want to add before we uh, head out? If you make us wealthy on Patreon, we will quit our job. So we'll have more time to respond to you on Facebook. See what I mean? I like it. So, I like it a lot. I, I think I think if, if we, I don't know what the bogey is, but if we could get people donating, I don't know, like a million dollars a month, we will be on your questions and comments immediately. And on that note, <laughs> and strangely enough, my wife's favorite dog growing up was named Bogey. Love that. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon.